Welcome to Coach's Roundtable. I'm Ed Cody, and welcome our guest, the former general manager of the Buffalo Bills and now an advisor at the Pitts 412 NIL program out of Upper St. Clair High School and the University of Pittsburgh, where he started in football. Welcome, Doug Whaley. Uh, Doug, uh, the draft's over. Uh, you have uh, They're going to give out 32 Lombardis this year. <laughs> Everybody walks away with the draft with a break, big smile on their face and feeling like they are on top of the world and every one of their draft picks is going to be like the 74 Steelers draft and going to the Hall of Fame. I've never heard anybody say, uh, we just didn't do too good, but uh, we'll, we'll get better next year. No matter how much you test the player, watch film on a player, you still don't know what you're getting in a draft necessarily. Is that right? Yes. I mean, there are just so many circumstances that can affect a player's trajectory and career. And sometimes it's self-inflicted by the player and other times it's inflicted by the, the team they go to. Is it the right system? Is it the right coach? And then you also have to deal with off-field issues. What's going on in their personal life? Do they have financial troubles? Or are they just overwhelmed? And some people, when they take that next step up. They think they're ready, but mentally they're not ready. And that's why you see a really convergence of teams that are looking into mental health and not only mental health, but mental performance, because one of the strongest muscles in your body is your brain. So why not train that? So there's a lot of things that go into it other than just, Hey, can this guy play football? Hey, Doug, let's do a little uh, uh, multiple choice question about the Steelers draft and get your, your, valuation on it um a it was a great draft one of the best uh, grades in all of pro football a solid a uh, b an average uh, uh draft somewhere around a, a b c disappointing no impact players on offense d none of the above All right, I'm going to go D, none of the above, but because I'm going to give it an A minus. And the only reason I give it A minus, I'll give it an A because they filled a lot, lot of needs, but an A minus because they didn't fill the cornerback need. And I think that's a position, especially in today's NFL and today's football, that I think a lot of people don't put as much importance on it as it is because it's a passing league. And they got the, they, upgraded a tackle they got a starting center they got a linebacker that can come in and play coverage they got a third receiver they still looking for that number two receiver but the biggest thing about this great this draft is you can tell they are establishing their identity on offense so it's not an a plus or an a i just give it a minus just because i'm really concerned about that secondary i agree with you there your grades a little more generous than mine uh, let's look at the offensive line. They take uh, Troy uh, Fontenot out of Washington. He's 6'3", 317. Some think he's better suited at guard. He's a terrific run blocker, but some questions about his pass protection. And I'm not sure he's going to start ahead of Dan Moore. Tomlin really likes Moore, uh, thinks Moore did a heck of a job. I don't see them budging more from left, moving Broderick Jones over there and putting Troy in at right tackle, so he may end up being the backup this year. Well, I look at it this way, and Coach, Coach Mike Tomlin always says he loves competition. You got a three-man competition, I'd throw him out there, and I'd have, especially in OTAs in the spring and training camp, I'd find out who my best five linemen are. And that's where you really know that they're trying to get it right instead of be right. Find different combinations and see what that best five, and then knowing whoever is left out, you have a compliment, compliment, a very competent backup. And I, I know a lot of people talk about the six three, uh, but if you look at his arm length, and you know as well as I do, coach, if you got thirty four inch arms and you're keeping that defender away from your body and not inside and getting, they can't get hands on you to try to do those rips and swim moves. It doesn't matter how tall you are. So six That's three to point. six five, you don't need to block vertically you know what I mean so that yeah, I don't I'm not worried thing, about that having coached the offensive line we always thought who who wins the hands battle you win the, you win the block whoever gets your hands inside first on a chest plate you're going to win that battle no, no matter how big that other guy is on defense right and he's got if you watch him he's got an incredible punch he's a it's not Leon Searcy punch but it's close so his hand placement his punch power what he can do with those arms, it, it, it's not a concern to me with the, the lack of height. 
All right, good point. And, uh, to me, the, their biggest pick to me is Zach Frazier to solidify that center position. Uh, what are your thoughts on Frazier? A plug and play guy. I, I mean, he he brings the attitude you want. I I like him because he can be put on an island as a center. Most centers, you, you're usually having help for them in pass pro or they're giving help. But he, I think he can be soloed up one-on-one -on -one and not need help because he has that. He's got that wrestling background. So that means he plays with leverage. He's got good grip strength. I think another thing he can do too is, is block in space. And, and not to mention, he's just a mauler as a limitations in his game. And I think, like I said, he's plug and play. Okay. To, to me, the big gap is Roman Wilson. I watched him play a lot. He's a good receiver. I don't think he's a number two. I think he's a number three. Uh, kind of small. He has trouble against big physical corners, so he looks more like a slot re receiver. I'm a little disappointed that they passed up. An, an, after they took Troy, I thought, well, now they're going to come back and get a, a wide receiver. There are so many of them out there, good ones, that they passed up, as well as defensive backs. Two of the best went to the Eagles. What, what's your thoughts on the Steelers passing up an impact offensive wide receiver? Yeah, I think it just goes to what I told you, what we said before is that their identity and their identity is going to be built from inside out. They're going to really focus on that offensive line. They're not right now, you can say, besides George Pickens, they're not going to be an explosive offense. They're going to be a ground and pound, three yards in a cloud of dust, take what's given. Roman is going to be that slot, like you said, get those, convert those third and fives, those third and six. He'll be in that slot doing choice routes and stuff like that. Every once in a while, try to get a big play to Pickens, but most of it's going to be sent around of bully ball. We have a better offensive line, and we're going to road grade you off of it. And that that's what they're going to do, and that's what you can tell why they drafted, how they drafted that that's their identity. And I wish they would have gotten a complimentary receiver to George because I still think George is a number two. I don't see him as a number one. He doesn't run the complete route tree. Most of his – he does have big plays, but it's always vertically – cutting routes it's not routes to come back routes routes that you break it off choice routes stuff like that so to me they need a number one and 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 possibly a number two because i think george is a is a number two if you want to think him as a number one then you need a number two so the big play splash plays that mike tomlin talks about on offense they're going to be centered around one guy and that guy can be taken out with the scheme so yes i was Surprised that they went that way and and with the offensive line. But again, it's just lamenting the fact this is our identity now. Well, you 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 hit on you hit the nail on, on the head when, when you said that they're gonna go with a ground chuck, the days of Woody Hayes, three yards in a cloud of dust. There's no air Coriel here, but that's going against the grain the way the NFL is today. Yes, it is. I mean, today it, it's, it's almost basketball on grass, and the rules are tilted to the passing attack. The rules are tilted to big plays to score and to go the opposite direction. That's an interesting uh, philosophy, but it might be one of those that it mimics what Michigan did in the, in the college level. They went against the grain and they were a three yard, a cloud of dust, uh, rough and tumble team that uh, didn't air it out and they won the national championship. So they things, they say things are cyclical I think the Steelers are going to try to lead the charge in going back to old school football. How surprised were you that the quarterbacks, Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. were taken in the first round? I didn't see that coming. I did not either. I did not, especially Bo Nix. Penix, I thought if it, it I didn't, my one wasn't privy to the medical. So if his, if he would have been clean, then I, I would have seen him with his ability going probably about, not as high as he did maybe later in the first round, but yes, it was a surprise. Uh, but it shows you two things. One, the importance of that position, but two, because of the economics and the way the rookie wage scale is, you might as well throw a dart at a quarterback. Cause if you hit great, if you miss, it doesn't cripple your, your, your team cap wise that you can't have to move on from them. So it's it's a calculated risk nowadays in the first round of drafting a quarterback. And a, it's one of those things that there, there's no reason not to. Hey, coach, in the final seconds here, uh, May 1st, Justin Fields 
uh, comes up for the franchise tag where he can make 25 million. Why, why would he sign a contract and pass up that 25 million franchise tag? You're familiar with this in your days as a GM. Yeah. So what it is, is his last year option on his rookie deal. When first round players, they have a fifth year option that the team can exercise and it's all up to the team. So if the team doesn't exercise, then he becomes a free agent uh, after this year. If the team does exercise it, then they have him for an additional year. And uh, I think the uh, how they compute it is it maybe the average of the top 10 salaries or something. I'm, I'm not sure now how they compute it, but uh, it's one of those reasons uh, that, especially for quarterbacks, it's a way if you have somebody that you haven't been able to lock in for a long-term deal, you get that extra year. So you can really get three extra years. You can get the that option from the first round rookie deal, then you can franchise them usually twice. That third franchise becomes cost prohibitive. So it's a way you can keep a player, especially a quarterback for seven years on one deal really without renegotiating the next one. Hey Doug, thanks for joining us. Uh, appreciate your insight. I'm going to get you back on this summer when the Steelers are in, in camp and before the season starts. Sounds good. Thanks coach. Take care. Thank you. I'll be right back with Alan George. Things change. One thing you can count on is that Armstrong always will be Armstrong. We've stood by our name from our humble beginnings in 1946 through the millions spent expanding fiber broadband in our communities. We've never changed our name to run from our reputation. We've established trust by simply putting our people, customers, and services first. It's a practice that holds true and will continue at Armstrong. I'm back, joined to my right by the Swami George Abraham, to my left, the Tiger Albert Campman. Let's go to high school softball, top performances, Lexi Haynes, Seneca Valley, two home runs, seven RBIs, and a 22-3 win over Pine Richland, and smart move by her coach, her mother, she didn't pitch. Give her a little bit 22, of a break. 22-3, I wouldn't pitch her either. Give her a little bit of a break. <laughs> hey, here's another terrific pitcher, Sydney Selker, Freeport. She had 11 Ks and one hit win over Shady Side, and then a 14 strikeout effort and a 5-2 win over Burl. Uh, Haley Sherman, Carn City, 5 RBI. Abby Dehitis of Knock, 4 for 4. She must be hitting about 500 this this year. Well, she has hit three or four hits every week she gets. Uh, Kelsey Ogen of Butler, 10 Ks and a 5 nothing to win over Mount Lebanon. Paige Volt, Seneca Valley, a grand slam. Jada Posinski of Carn City, three hits and six RBI. Uh, and then how about the uh, sister deal, Big Poison, Little Poison, <laughs> senior catcher Anna Kolkowski of Seneca Valley, three hits, sophomore pitcher Abby Kolkowski. She had a home run, two RBIs, and a 9-6 win over N.A., a big win. The Raiders moving on. They're 14-0, and the number one ranked team. So they had, two, they had two pitchers pitched that game, didn't they? I mean, they had two different pitchers. That's it's interesting. Well, well, the one, the one, the one, the yeah. senior, the senior is a catcher. Okay. And her sophomore sister so is a pitcher. pitcher. Yeah. Uh, high school baseball top performances: uh, Kellen Durbin, Seneca Valley, four hits and an eight-seven win over NA. Sal Minio, Slippy Rock High School, five RBI. Jacob Callahan, Carn City, four RBI. Troy Nagel, Carn City, six RBI. Matt Paraguire, North Allegheny, three hits and three RBI. Hunter Lang, knock a three-hit shutout win. He pitched over Freeport. And uh, Nolan Stefaniak, a Butler, a five-to-nothing shutout win over Mount Lebanon. High school track, how many times have we mentioned this kid? Levi Prementine at Slip Rock High School, a three-event winner. He won the high jump, triple jump, and set a school record of 14.54 in the 110-meter hurdles. Back to had two state titles last year. He yeah, he, he he has to be getting some looks from some major schools, I would think. Somewhere, uh, somewhere well, it depends, on it depends on his marks. So they, yeah, they don't go right, right. Oh, I get, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Elwood City, by the way, won the Tri County for the first time in a while, so that they have a good team. They've had a pretty Track good team. sports year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lacrosse, Aiden Davis and Butler, seven goals. Jake uh, Stevens, four. And Jake's in Salada, three, and a 17-7 win over Erie Prep. College track, 
a senior, Tim Patterson from Butler at St. Vincent College. He won the 5,000 meters at the President's Athletic Conference Championship. And on the women's side, freshman Jenna Zendron of Monotol Westminster College. She won the 400 meters and she anchored the winning 1600 relay team also at the PACC. College basketball, former Butler star, Purdue grad Ethan Morton will transfer to Colorado State to finish his final year of eligibility in basketball. The Rams were 25 and 12 last year in the Mountain West. Uh, Morton, how about him? He already has his engineering degree from Purdue. I wish him well at Colorado State. They're not bad, right? No, they, no, they were good last were year. Were they in the NCAA year. tournament or were they in the NIT? They, they were, I think they were left out. There's one, they were, I don't think they were one of the six. There were six yeah, teams. They had like, six teams, yeah. They yeah. went in the NIT then? Yeah. They were. They didn't win it. No, yeah, they, but was, they were 25 and 12. Yeah, yeah. they, had, they yeah. had a good team. Yeah. No question. So I'm, I'm just, I never thought that, yeah. that he was going west. I yeah. thought he'd come east. Well, you, you know, when you go into the portal, someone must have been looking at him and said, hey, we need some help it's here. Some, guard. some cash. You're a good yeah. defensive player. <laughs> yeah. All right, Tribune Review, uh, baseball rankings in 6A. Number one, North Allegheny, followed by number three, Pine Richland. Number five, Seneca Valley in 3A. Number one, and maybe the best team of them all, Riverside 10 and 0. And in uh, softball rankings, Trib News, 6A, Seneca Valley, number one, 14 and 0. Number three, North Allegheny. Number four, Pine Richland. And in 4A, number five, Surging Knock. They've been on a roll. All right, let's go to our stories of the week. The end. 89th NFL draft is over from What's Up Detroit before a record claustrophobic crowd of 275,000. <laughs> would you put yourself in the middle of that crowd? I wouldn't. <laughs> I think the over and under on soiled pants was 1,500. <laughs> How do you get out of there to go to a restroom? Wow, it's amazing. You fight your way out. out of there. All right, then you look at everything that went on there. It was a, the, the way the people were dressed. It was a combination of Halloween, the Mardi Gras, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve and the New York uh, Models Runway show. So all 32 teams are going to go undefeated this year. Yeah, I hear the experts say the same thing. Wow, that was a great pick. Man, that was a great pick. Man, that was a great pick. Yeah. I was I was one of them would say, this guy stinks. <laughs> yeah, you know, the experts, all, all the mumbo jumbo, the stuff that they say. Well, he can bench press 500 pounds while he plays a harmonica. <laughs> stuff that do doesn't matter. And and then you have your expert, Mel Kuyper, which he usually does what, George? 25 Eight out of 32, yeah. Okay, I had five. You had at least five or six. Or We had and, the first and, five for sure. Yeah, we had the first five. I had five, so that puts us in there. So <laughs> Mel Kuyper, Dr. X Lax, Professor of Physics, and and they and they pay him all this money and he gets seven right out of twenty five. Yeah, what's interesting about him is when he first started doing it, it was totally based on film game film. Right now, all he talks about is arm lengths. I'm so tired about you know this kid has a chance to be good because his arms are long. <laughs> Can he play? I don't want to have a long. Uh, and 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 for us, <laughs> uh, we watch the we we're not there for the test, but we watch the games. I. I I don't miss too many college games, no, no, and I see do. who's good and who I That's like. That's what we go by. That's what we go by. Dar Dar Donald didn't have long arms. He ended up having a pretty good career. <laughs> How about Mike Webster? If you went by yes. arm length, he, he wouldn't never... have drafted. All right, let's go to our top grades by our analyst, uh, Cy Shokowitz from the University of Bologna. And uh, I have the Bears at the top A+. Plus. They should be. You know, I mean, they, they, By need, they, yeah. they had the number one pick with, with the team that's pretty good. But yes. you made a good point last seven week. Wins. This is a team that was what last yeah. year? Seven, seven and ten. And ten. Mm -hmm. So they could easily turn things around Quickly, and be ten like and that. seven like that. Yes. yes, and between getting quarterback Williams and a wide receiver Rome Adunze, what what a nice pick! And I have right behind them the Eagles. How do they get the two best defensive backs in the draft? Uh, Quinion Mitchell. Out of Toledo and Cooper DeGene. Do you see what this kid all around athlete? Out Iowa. He could have played anywhere at Iowa from running back to wide receiver. They should have played a wide receiver. They, they should have played him yeah. that off it. It is you 40 know, points. <laughs> DeGene is like that. They said because the kicks are going to be returned. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's going to be valuable. Pump returner, too. Yeah. Uh, Arizona, I have an air of uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. And then oh, yeah. uh, they get a good outside linebacker and Darius Robinson and a couple of real good defensive ba backs, uh, uh, Max uh, uh, Melton and Eli Elijah Jones. Yes, uh, we've talked about this many times, Eddie. Uh, we can analyze it all we want right now. Yeah. Five years from now, we'll find out how good the draft is. Well, that's what both Kevin yes. Colbert and Doug Whaley said. It takes three years, and you don't know what you're you're getting into. I have Washington in there next. 
you kind of like what, what they did. They got uh, Jaden Daniels, and they got the best defensive tackle, uh, uh, Jerzon uh, Newton, who's a real run stuffer out of Illinois. I like Newton out of Illinois. I like him a lot. And here's a surprise. Can, I have Kansas City in there with, with one of the top grades. How in the world do they end up with the fastest wide receiver, Xavier Worthy, 4.2? What was Buffalo thinking about in that trade? Did they know they have to beat Kansas City to get to the Super Bowl? He's 165 pounds. We'll see if he lasts in the pros. So that, that's going to take one hit and he's going to be sitting on the side. Of well, that's, that's true. It. But I think if anyone knows how to use Kansas him, City would, yeah. The, yeah. they'll use him in that's the right true. way. Uh, the Raiders had a very good good draft. Now they have two outstanding tight ends and Brock Byers and Michael Mayer, who they drafted last year. And they got the center that everyone thought the Steelers wanted, Jackson Pyrus Johnson. Yeah, but well, he, has, he went down. You know, I thought he was the best coming out, and all of a sudden they had two centers ahead of him like that. Arms. 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 That's, That's what they talk yeah, about. Yeah. I, I'm just telling you, I don't I agree with it. I know. That's a mess, and, true. And, and uh, Baltimore I have in there, and uh, – Cornerback um, uh, Nate Wiggins and defensive end Adisa uh, Isaac out of Penn State and a real good steal at offensive tackle in uh, Roger Rosengarten. They feel well, the Ravens home. always they always draft well. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Ravens draft well. They're, they're big bugaboos when it comes time to step Lamar. up. About week nineteen, it's Lamar. They it, don't step Lamar off. not coming. Now I have the rest. You can bunch them in there. I have the Steelers and the Bengals and the Browns and Houston. And the giant Seattle, you could bunch them all in there, basically with 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 the same grade. And we'll, we'll just one see. thing I'll say this: I I I checked off the worst is Atlanta. I still I have no idea. I, I have no. I'm idea glad you brought that up because, and I asked Doug Whaley this: How surprising that the quarterbacks, Knicks and Michael Penix Jr., went in the first round? I thought, first round. I thought they were now, second Penix or third rounder. Round. He could have been. He shouldn't go to a team that has, has a really good quarterback already. Well, look how the NFL has changed. Kenny Pickett was a first round pick, and Tom Brady and Joe Montana were sixth and seventh <laughs> round picks. What's that tell you about? Because they don't the know anything. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. No, it right. tells you how inaccurate they are. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And, and this Nick, he's a three yard swing pass guy. Those guys at Oregon, they catch that eight yarder and end up down the field fifty yards. He, if he plays for Denver, then they're no further ahead than they were. You, you know, when I look at the draft, and one one of the things I look at, the guy's health history. Injury. I, so many guys drafted, played two games, three games, missed for this injury, that injury. I, I don't know. I'm sure maybe today, you know, years ago, a knee injury, you were maybe oh. done. But today they come back. But it's it's a pretty big risk. Really? And, and they, they do know that. I'll say that. NFL. Yeah. They know every inch of your body. They, that day they're in the, at the combine. Don't they have MRIs in the basement of that place? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've, at the combine, they test everything about your jo every joint of your body. They know how healthy you are. All right, let's go to the Steelers. I give them a B or a B minus. They start off with off offensive tackle Troy Fontenot, 6'3, 317. I brought that up to Doug Whaley, and what Whaley said, he likes his arm length. And so uh, I don't. <laughs> now, let me say this. Uh, Tomlin drafted him because he loves football. All these other guys that were drafted, they like ping pong or something. <laughs> but I don't think he's going to replace Dan Moore, as I talked to you about in the phone. Tomlin likes Moore. I don't think there's any plan to move Moore out of left tackle. So I, I think Fontenot, if he's going to start, might be at guard, not at tackle. It could be. But they but they want Jones at left tackle badly. So we'll see how what, what wins out the battle there. Um but don't expect that to happen. Remember, Roderick Jones didn't even start last year and, until Okafor, Okafor ran his uh, uh, criticized Tomlin's uh, the offense, and then he, <laughs> he, was, he was done. He'll, he'll be with New England this year. <laughs> hey, their best pick, in my opinion, you guys tell me what you think, was offensive center Zach Frazier out of West Virginia, who's the same size as Troy. Well, Pete, they, he went up the ward, as they talk about, yeah. and uh, um, West Virginia raves about him. We'll find out. I like the linebacker from NC State as our best pick. Well, I, I like my, him I, too, that, Peyton Wilson. But the only thing, he's Albert like, about him, he's, he's, had, he's had more surgeries yeah, than Frankenstein. He's not injured, I said. It, it, he had a, they had a good defense at NC State also. When they were healthy, they yeah. were And he was the best. He he's the missing best an ACL. But my, my only concern with him, they're going to throw him out there on the special teams where you're more susceptible to injuries, especially with him with his bad knees. I think he's going to start. I, I, believe, think, I believe he'll be in the starting I line. think it's Trippy's player. And the, guy, the guy from Baltimore is really good. Queen, right? 
Yeah, yeah. So they got Queen and Hill. That's what yeah. I'm saying. They got, okay. I, that's what they could have. And, I, and I, then they took Roman Wilson, a wide receiver out of Michigan. I like him, but he's more of a slot receiver, a number three. And that's my big question. Then they took another offensive guard, Mason McCormick, who's going to be a backup. Now, I like a surprise sleeper pick here in the defensive end in the sixth round out of Iowa. Logan Lee, Iowa's filled the NFL with defensive players. He's 6'5", 280. He should rotate in there, maybe a defensive end, and maybe even spell off uh, Cam Hayward. Well, they draft anybody from Iowa. It has to be on defense. So. It has to be on defense. Yeah, there are no offensive players oh, yeah. out, out of there. They do get great tight ends. That's what they do. They yeah, great that's tight right. Ends. Yeah, they're several. So, yeah. the, the Steelers passed up to my disappointment. I said, okay, you take an offensive lineman first, whether it's center or tackle. Your next pick should have been one of the best wide receivers on the board. They're, they did not pick up any impact players, and they passed up some outstanding defensive backs, too, corners. Your so, thoughts on that? Well, I thought, as I told you, I thought the linebacker was a, was a great pick. Right. I thought uh, I thought Frazier was outstanding. I thought they had two really good picks. Um, but no impact players. Yeah, but Who's I, thrown the ball to? But I think the impact players are on the line of scrimmage. If you ask me who, 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 uh, who okay. wins, okay. it's who wins on the line of okay, scrimmage. Okay, so you're I'm more right. like I talked with. Uh, uh, Doug Whaley, you're more like Woody Hayes, three yards in a cloud of dust, and not no uh, pass Coriel. No pass protection. Well, who, who's Wilson throwing the ball? Well, to? I, they'll sign somebody like Sutton. Uh, someone will end up in that camp. That's going to be really good. But but they can't afford. They've already looked at some of the. They couldn't even sign Tyler Boyd. They were far apart in money. That's a good point. And and, and everyone's talking talk about the the receiver from Frisco. Is it? Now, he, a, he went. But he went fourteen. No. Yeah, he money could be an issue. Million. Money could be an issue. Yeah. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll see what happens here. Uh, some of the receivers they passed up: Brian Thomas, LSU, uh, Xavier Worthy, and then Rick. Persall, and then I think the uh, since since he got a pretty good receiver, is it Burton, J- uh, uh, Jermaine Burton, big from, receiver, from Georgia, I don't, I don't, strong I don't, I receiver from Georgia. All right, so if you look at the division, they're kind of so close. I mean, I have Baltimore top, and then Cincy Steelers and the Browns all bunched in right it's now. Right. Them, it's about right. It's about right for them. So uh, Butler's uh, Jake Cradle. He went to uh, from Pitt. He's a free agent, signed with Indy and Slippery Rock University wide receiver Kyle Sheets. I've seen he's six four, very talented. Seventy six uh, re- receptions for over eleven hundred uh, yards. He also signed as a free agent. So Saints. the Saints, yeah, the Saints had a pretty good draft. Uh, I'd rather be too. I'd rather be a free agent than a seventh round pick. Right, you get Which the pick. You, you get the pick. The, that's team, why they narrowed it down team where they need you. And, 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 and if you make the practice squad, you get, what, twelve or 14000 a week for 17 it's weeks? It's 100 There's 200 that. some and thousand. They're, they're upping that. I've been with uh, yeah. my buddy, like when, say, a lineman for Seattle would get hurt. Yeah. His phone the next day. Everybody wants linemen, too. But the problem, as you say, is, you know, keeping these guys healthy for 17 weeks. Well, look, look, pit offensive tackle, Matt Cohn yeah, yeah, Very him. good. He goes to Indy. He only played two games last year, a severe toe injury. Yeah. You can't play without those toes or your feet. No. So, But they think enough of him and his ability that they're going to take a chance on him, like the Steelers with Peyton Wilson. Now the Steelers have more Wilsons than anyone else <laughs> in any pro, pro team. Uh, and while we're talking about <clears throat> this commissioner um, – Roger Goodell is talking about an 18-game schedule. More money, more games, more injuries, shortened careers. I don't want to hear from the NFL players. You one word, more they, streaming. <laughs> yeah, more, they sold their soul to the devil a yeah. long time ago, agreeing to 16, 17 games. Yeah. How, how many games? And then two meaningless preseason games. How many games are enough? Not just go to their 20 goal, games. Their goal is to have the Super Bowl the day before President's Day. Yeah, he, he, wants, a th- he wants a three-day holiday yeah. there f- for it. Um, well, the billions of dollars they were ma- are making, they, yeah. want, they, want, they want multi-billions. They want yeah, more. Whatever they want. Yeah, yes. yeah it, it, it's <laughs> never enough. I, I just right. don't get moving to the 18-game scale. I say just go to the 20. That's what you're aiming They're gonna for. They're going to be there someday. No, no preseason We'll be around games. for that one, but don't be there. Yeah. Hey, that's it for us. We've run out of time. We'll see you next week.